Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bigfoot, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be playing some Two Point Hospital, starting a new series on my channel. Now, unless you've been living under a rock for the past week, I guess you could say, or even longer than that, depends how active you are with gaming news, you would have heard of this game, Two Point Hospital, on Twitter, YouTube, and I'm sure other places where they discuss games. Now, this game is, I guess, a blast in the past for some people. Not for me, to be fair, but Theme Hospital, a game which I have watched from Let's Plays on. It is, uh, it's an old game, basically a hospital tycoon, and this is essentially the more modern version of it. So, what's going to happen is we're going to build an empire of hospitals, try and make them profitable, and go ahead and see how we get on. Now, I must say that I have played a little bit of this game. Not a lot of this game, to be fair, but I have played some. And we're just going to go ahead and delve right into it. This game came out on the 30th of August, so two days ago. I'm going to talk over the introduction here because it is just a trailer at the start here. But this game came out two days ago on the Thursday. You're seeing this on the Saturday. I do apologize about the two-day delay. I am extremely busy, which I will explain towards the end of this video. But this game is everywhere right now. It is quite amazing how it's taken over. It has had a lot of hype around it, especially a lot of large YouTubers have picked up this game and given it a go. So it is interesting to see, and it does seem a very enjoyable game. I've played about an hour of it so far, and it also seems to be doing extremely well on the entertainment fronts as well. It's not just a normal Hospital Tycoon game, which there are a few out there. It does allow you to go ahead and express some creativity, especially in the later game when you get to go ahead and, I guess, explore different health sort of situations. You get to go ahead and cure different things. A lot of wild things which we'll get to eventually. The start, though, unfortunately, it's quite normal. It's quite plain. Very much you build multiple hospitals, as we can see this H here on this island. This is Hogsport, and here, your first hospital. Click on it to get started. Basically what you do is you build a hospital empire. We're starting here in Hogsport, but from here you can go to various other towns. But the first two hospitals, or at least the first one anyway, is very tutorial orientated. So if you don't know much about this game, you shortly will. You can actually go ahead and skip forward if you've unlocked the stuff, but we've not yet. So we're going to start off here in Hogsport, though this won't take long, and the tutorials in general are just as a wee guidance, which will help us get started and allow us to build upon and expand our network as time goes on. So Two Point Hospital, welcome to Two Point County. Are you ready to start building your first hospital and curing some patients? I think I might be. So this is just to do it with the camera, so it's very much general camera controls, not exactly difficult, very much similar. So as we can see here, this is Two Point County, and not really at all sure whereabouts. We must be, of course, by the coast in the town of Hogsport, I believe it is. And I think we're all good here. Have we completed this part? I believe we should have by now. So goodbye to you. So it's a nice lot we've got here, a very nice plot, and it should allow us to build a quite extensive hospital. We've already been given the building, but we customize the inside of it. Basically, it's sort of an on-demand sort of thing as we go on. Okay, so reception. The first thing the hospital needs is a reception. Patients will head here when they arrive at the hospital. Let's build a reception desk. So this game is a lot like many other games. It's got multiple menus and you go ahead and search through those menus and place items quite simply. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to slowly get used to the camera because it is slightly weird. We're going to place this right in the middle as well. So I want to place that about there. And that is the reception desk built. So now we need to get a receptionist in here. So again, like most tycoon games, very much so you have multiple different staff types. You've got doctors, nurses, assistants, and janitors. You can sort of tell what they all do. We're going to need an assistant to man the desk to get us started. Individuals also have traits as well. So for example, we've got customer service skills here, and then we've got two lots of customer service skills. So what we're going to do is just to be economical, we're just going to start off with Ah, to be fair, we have the money right now. We're going to go with the three-star option. Go ahead and hire you. And then we're going to place you over by the 
receptionist desk. So that is us good to go on that front. General practitioner's office though, for a hospital or I guess we're starting really building a doctor surgery here. What we need to do is we need to go ahead and build a GP's office. GP is very much the term which is used for a, a doctor, I guess you could say, in the United Kingdom. Might be used in other countries, though I'm not at all sure. Patients will give... Whoa, 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 that's not what it reads. Patients will visit a doctor working as a general practitioner at each stage of diagnosis. The GP will assess patients and decide if they are ready for treatment or if they'd require further diagnosis. So again, we're just starting off very basic, but as time goes on, we'll get into a little bit more complex stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a room, and it is quite straightforward with this building here. As I said, the building has already been outlined, and we just need to go ahead and build the building. So this is the room we've got here. We're going to go ahead and build a door. Now we're going to go ahead and build a desk, which I'm going to put up in the corner here. Going to need some filing cabinets. Now, as all this goes on, you can slowly see that our money will deplete. You need to go ahead and accept the building of the room, but we've not completed the room as of yet. What I want to do is continue to raise this prestigiousness because this is a very important metric which we have in the hospital. If you have higher prestige, that means you can generally attract better doctors, you can attract more patients, and from there you can earn more money. So I do want to make this a, a high-end hospital if B. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add extra props in here. So going to add in a bin, for example, as well. Then we're going to add an extinguisher. I've maybe made this room a bit large, which I could totally relate. Uh, let's hit no there. But it is nice to have. We'll also add in a plant in the corner here as well. That will help out as well. And then I think we are good for that office for the time being. So let's accept that. That gets built at a fee of just over 6000 and then Doctor Home, excellent. We now need a doctor to run the office, so we know how to hire one. We're just gonna go ahead and browse over the office here, so it is very basic, but it will allow for some extra items to be put in here as we unlock them. So let's go ahead and hire our first doctor, shall we? Okay, so filtering by doctors. Doctors cost a lot more money to hire. That kind of makes sense because they are a bit more specialized. So what traits are we really after here? Well, we're after the best doctor possible, pretty much. And what I'm going to go for is most likely Dolly Solomon, just because she's got four different traits. It is good to have specialists in certain areas. For example, we've got a specialist, Scotty Bright, in diagnostics. But just because we're starting off small right now, we're just going to go ahead and someone that has got more all-round skills. I do apologize. Dolly has three unique traits. But as we can see, she's got plus 10 in treatment, she's got plus 15 in general practice, and she's also got, I guess, plus 20 in diagnostics. So she is the one I will hire. So let me go ahead and take her. It's going to be quite a large recruitment fee, just short of 7,000, and then her salary is 38,000 as well, which is a lot, but again, that's the sort of price you're going to pay for a doctor. Okay, so the hospital is now open. Great. Good news, our hospital is open for business. Patients are starting to arrive. After they register at reception, they'll be sent to the GP for diagnosis. So with that said, now we're just going to go ahead and wait on some patients. It's going to get me used to the camera again, which I'm sort of am. It's a while since I've played video games properly, just with me being on my travels in America and down in the south of England. But it is just sort of a waiting game now, to be honest. As we can see, it looks like someone has been dropped off. This is Dominic Trout, and he's going to reception. It seems like... I don't actually know what's wrong with him. It looks like he's got a bit maybe of a temperature. Though, of course, we don't know because he's not been diagnosed yet. But he's come in, he's visited the receptionist, and now he's going in to see the doctor. So he's going to go ahead and sit down at the doctor's desk. And they're going to have a conversation. I'm sure he's going to go ahead and explain his symptoms. He's been diagnosed and he's got increased happiness. That all reflects well in the hospital. And later down the line, you'll really see why. Basically, what it will give us, as I said, is just long-term increased money through increased other benefits, such as better doctors and facilities. I don't know why I said that in a weird voice, but hey-ho. 
Okay, so we've diagnosed our first patient. The GP has sent you a message. Have a look at the message list in the bottom right. Looks like we'll need to build a pharmacy to treat this patient. Okay, so that is a quite a simple thing. In the United Kingdom, not all hospitals necessarily have pharmacies. Pharmacies can very much just be a high street store, whereas hospitals obviously aren't. But what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. This is basically just a message telling me to go ahead and build a pharmacy, which we will do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the patient to wait. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and jump into rooms. So we're going to build a pharmacy here and we're going to go ahead and sort of make this hospital, first of all, symmetrical. But we're going to go ahead and build the pharmacy room. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this drug mixer is what it is. So it's essentially going to go ahead and mix us up all those substances, I guess, and give us our prescription for our necessary patients. Now with that, we're going to need a nurse, as we can see here. I do know a lot of this because I have played through the very first light hour of this game, I guess you could say. But outside of that... It will get to a stage where I'm going into the unknown. So what do we have here? We have three nurses to choose from. Again, not the best overall traits. Increase happiness of patients when dealing with them. So I think we're going to go for Bruce again, the most expensive option. But you'll be able to do the trick. So you've been employed. And now we've got our good friend Dominic going ahead and being given some drugs, so our nurse is going to go over to the dispenser. Some things are going to get mixed up and he's going to get produced sort of tablets, I'm assuming. It might not be, to be fair, though. It sort of does a thing, a cool animation, to be fair, I can't lie. And then it's going to dispense out some drugs, and then that's us fully treated the patients. We've diagnosed, and we've gone ahead and it looks like giving them a smoothie. But the good thing is we got money from that, but also you'll notice that these stats will slowly start to improve and that really means that everything is now sorted, which is good to see. So I'm very happy about that indeed. So as we can see by curing patients, it does go ahead and help the hospital out. Okay, so with that done, that is basically the gist of this first hospital. It's not too complicated anyway. There's a lot of other stuff which comes with this. Janitors and maintenance is what we're going to be brought onto next. And this, again, it's very much like a lot of other tycoon games in similar ways. It is very much, you know, it's got janitors, it's got maintenance, it's got finance, it's got loans, it's got all this sort of stuff which you'd expect in a typical tycoon. But it is just based around hospitals, funnily enough. Okay, so now we've got some expensive machinery. We should think about looking after it. Machines that will deteriorate with use and will need repairing from time to time. If a machine falls into despair, it can be a fire hazard. Fires are generally considered bad for business. Well, no shit, I could, uh, yeah. Hire a janitor to maintain machines. While you're at it, make sure you've got some fire extinguishers nearby. Better safety, or better safe than sorry, right? And it is good to have better safety, is what I was trying to say. Okay, so, so far we have, I believe, a fire extinguisher already, which is nice to see. So what we're going to do now is we're going to decorate this place out anyway while we're at it. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and put a fire extinguisher in this room as well, just because we're going to do it for safety. So let's go ahead and put a fire extinguisher in the corner here, just in case the drugs mixer catches on fire. That would be a bit of a disaster. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hire ourselves our janitor. Then we'll start to kit out reception here. So as we can see, we've got quite a mix of janitors. As we can see, we've got two lower end ones and we've got one upper end one. So the traits are maintenance, increased repair and maintenance skills, something which is essential at this stage. Then we've got ghost capture. Don't think we need to worry about that at this stage. Emotional intelligence, that would be a desirable trait, but not required. Maintenance too, that would be handy, and then motivation, but I feel that's too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in Bill instead of Ava, just because you're a little bit cheaper and you're going to be hired and you're just going to roam the floors. So janitors will be called to repair a machine when its maintenance level falls before 50%. You can also request a janitor to repair it immediately, 
if it is having problems. Okay, so the next thing we're going to learn about is keeping people happy. It's important to keep your staff and patients happy to ensure the hospital runs smoothly. Patients will get bored, thirsty and hungry over time. Make sure they have access to entertainment, food, drinks, comfy seats. This is what I was about to say basically. I'm going to kiss out a reception area. So I know what I want to go ahead and do here. I have an idea. I built this hospital in a certain way. And as we can see, we do have a large plot of land. But what we're going to do is we're going to have an uh, initial entrance reception. And then we might have other reception areas throughout the hospital. Like I guess you do in just general hospitals anyway. So what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to go ahead and use the spaces wisely. We're going to do a drinks and then we're going to go ahead and do a snack machine. Then what I want to do is go ahead and add in some benches. So how am I going to do this? We're going to go ahead and I think have these inward facing. So like this, for example. And have another one there, have another one back there. And that gives me enough room to walk around. And then we're just going to do symmetrical. So going to have quite a lot of benches to start off with here. I'm just trying to make sure that is symmetrical. That is symmetrical there and there and then back there as well, which is fine. And then we'll also add in some plants. And then I'd also like leaflet stands as well. This relates to customers' boredom as well, which again is all part of the general satisfaction of the hospital. If you want to pick up an item, hover over it, then click hold with the left mouse. So you can move stuff around if you want to. It is quite easy to go ahead and do. So the next thing we're being prompted to do is staff get tired as they work and will eventually go on a break. A staff room will help them relax and return to their work energised. Drinks and snacks often keep them happy too. If you make a room larger and fill it with interesting items, it will be considered more prestigious. People using a high prestige room will be happier. A nice staff room will also help staff regain energy faster. So this is all quite important and again it's sort of how well you build it is how well your staff sort of continue to work. The good thing is we started off at 200,000, so we're sort of already just about in the profit, to be honest. We are doing quite well on the money making. Okay, so as we can see here, our receptionist has quote-unquote gone on a break. They've disappeared, and now we've got George waiting here at reception, which is unfortunate. So we need to go ahead and now build this re or staff room. I was about to say reception room, not quite, but we've got a staff room to go ahead and build now, which we'll do. So let's go ahead and build this in over here. Uh, we're going to start off with this sort of size right now, which is fine. We can go ahead and get a sofa in the corner there. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add in a drinks machine, which will rotate around. Then we'll also add in a snack machine. I do really like the snapping tools in this game so far. They are quite, I feel they're quite smooth compared to some games like Planet Coaster. I'm not a big fan of them at all in that game. Of course we're going to add in a fire extinguisher and then we'll also add in a plant to help out in the room. Then after that we've got quite a few different options here. So some of this stuff I've not unlocked yet. As you can see basically we need a certain amount of unlock for K400. Current total only 30. So that is to do with these down here. So as we can see we've got our money. We've also got these Earn kudosh for your organization by completing challenges. Use it to unlock items in the items list. So this is again, it allows really and it gives value to challenges really, which is good to see. So right now we've not exactly got anything which we can really add to the staff room to make it exciting, such as a TV or a dartboard. But it does give us some lockers, which will very much help us out indeed. So let me go ahead and rotate some of this around. Add in some lockers there. Currently we've got four staff members, but I'll leave it with three lockers for the time being, which is fine. And then we'll build this room. So there we have it. That is the staff room. So staff will now head to a staff room when they're on their break. Fill the room with yada yada. Note, you can place a member of staff in the staff room to make them take a break or in a work room to make them work there. 
to pick up a member of staff, yada yada. So again, you have that sort of control, it's not all necessarily AI driven. Okay, so before I go ahead and... Okay, maybe not. <laughs> I was going to say let's explore the menus because it is quite good to know just going forward. So drinks and snacks are great for keeping people happy, but they can lead to littering uh, if there are no bins nearby. While we're at it, staff and patients get pretty grumpy if they don't have access to any toilets. You might want to invest in some quality... Horse lane? I've never seen that word in my life before, honestly. Janitors will help maintain all of these restocking vending machines, sweeping up litter, emptying bins, and unblocking toilets. Perfect, so we need to build some toilets. Just before we do that, though, I want to go ahead and just go through the menus, just while we're at it. So, we know about this one, this is really the rooms. Eventually, we'll get to the stage where there'll be 30 or 40 rooms in this menu as we unlock new stuff. Items, you know, and then the higher list as well you know of as well. There is a lot more filter options which you can search through people because as the hospital increases, it's sort of like another brick in the mall, another series we're doing right now. It is very, very, um, you can have lots and lots of different people applying for jobs the more you unlock really. On top of that, as we can see here, this is just the overview of the map. This is what we've seen at the start. So right now, this is the two-point county. I can't really go into any other counties. Looks like this seaside village up here is in another county. I can't access it yet, but that's something along the way. There's career goals. That's something which we will follow as time goes on. This again gives us more unlocks, so on and so forth. Leaderboards, not too interested in this right now to be honest it seems to be only be me and dylan on this right now he's obviously doing very well but he is also quite a few episodes into his let's play at this stage but we will maybe catch up with him what we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and return into the hospital so if we go ahead and jump back into here as we can see we have our money that's most important reputation as well is fine this is on a basis of if you do well and save lots of patients, that will go up. If someone dies, it will go down. And then your hospital level basically is a measurement of the overall size of your hospital based on the rooms and staff. Have a higher hospital level means you'll be able to attract more patients. We all know the date and all that sort of stuff. So outside of that, there is also basically information on the staff, patients and illnesses. This isn't exactly too exciting at this early stage but again as we can see the illness list it's basically just lists all the illness that are currently a problem in with the county as you expand more there are more illnesses that come around so as we can see grout is frequently transmitted in bathrooms and modern medication is effective unlike earlier times when it had to be dug out painfully with a screwdriver it's a great image. I hope no one is eating right now. I do apologize. So, I mean, treatment costs 5000 room, so on and so forth. So, this is just the general pharmacy this gets treated at so once you've been diagnosed. But again, things get a lot more complicated as time goes on. And then there's a lot more stuff. Again, similar with patients and staff. I'm not going to go into all that right now, though. Going into the financial side of things as well. This is very, very important. And this is where, really, we calculate... How well the hospital is doing, we'll come back into this later, but it's, I mean, again, it's very stereotypical of a tycoon game. On top of that, then, you've got some more information just about the game itself, what's actually happened in the hospital, and then the awards are quite important as well. Again, it's something which is good to drive your hospital for. You've got loans and prices as well. And then finally, there is overlays, which you can go ahead and see, and this really helps you out with. You know, patient happiness, seeing where people are happy, seeing where there's illness, where there's health, so on and so forth. And it is very, very useful, as is in many other tycoon games like it. Okay, right, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and jump out of that, and we're going to get back to work. So, as we can see in here, we need to build toilets, that's the next thing we need to do. I'm just going to double check the mail, so that's item control, we know how to deal with that. Hospital reputation increases. If a patient is successfully cured, it will drop if they die. Higher reputation, we know about that as well. So staff promotion, this is something which is new. So Bruce Spanner is ready for promotion from student nurse to junior nurse. Promotion from student nurse to junior nurse will 
provide plus one training slots, 10% increased movement speeds, 10% increased diagnostic skills, and then 10% increased in treatment skills. Offer a pay rise to keep the staff member happy, and I'm quite happy to go ahead and do that. So that's you promoted, which is good to see. Okay, so we're going to go into rooms. We're finally going to build these toilets. I hope no one has been waiting for the toilet for that length of time. What I'm going to do here is... I've not actually built a toilet yet, so I don't know how big it needs to be, to be honest. But this side of the hospital is a little bit different shaped. So what we're going to do is build one hospital or one bathroom here. Now, bathroom cubicles one, two, and three... Then what we're going to do is go ahead and add in some sinks along the top here. And then we'll add in a hand dryer over here. Another one. I can't do it there. I'm going to run out of room here. Now, so we'll have two hand dryers on that wall there. The door's there. Then we can have a bin in here. And then obviously need a fire extinguisher as well. We'll put that under the window. So that is pretty much that bathroom built, which is perfect. So janitors will empty the bins and unblock toilets. This is much better than having to sweep up litter and other waste, such as poo, I guess you could say. Right, so further diagnostics. We're hearing reports of some new illnesses in town. These might be harder to diagnose. We may need to build a new diagnosis room. If the GP isn't certain, they will send the patient for further diagnosis. So like an advanced GP. Now this is expected. Of course, for example, in the UK, if a doctor, a general GP or whatever you call them, general practitioner, then they will send you on to the hospital to be x-rayed or to be further examined. That is typically what happens. And essentially, we're just doing that, but just within a hospital here. So it looks like uh, this is just more hospital level stuff. So as you expand the hospital with more rooms and staff, the hospital level increases, a larger hospital attracts more patients, as the hospital gets busier, queues may start to be long, we may need to get, build more GP offices and other rooms, hire more staff to deal with the extra patients, look out for queue warnings above rooms, you can also hover over a room to highlight people queuing for that room. Okay, so that's interesting to know, it really is just with the demand and really how things, I guess, go, depends also on the town as well. It is all very important. As we can see, we've got quite a few people in here right now. Looks like the... I'm guessing the nurse is at the bathroom. Yeah, I think he was just at the bathroom, so that's fine. So you're happy, you're energised, you're funny and expensive. I don't know if that's good traits or bad, but at least you're happy and at least you're energised. I cannot complain about that at all. We do have quite a few people in with the hospital right now. Looks like you're not doing too well, buddy. It looks like you're coughing a bit. You're going to be called in to the GP's office. And we've also got a few people, I believe, in the queue as well. Queue length only one, so it's not too bad. And then what about... Okay, so it's interestingly the pharmacy which is holding things up. Not good to see, but it is what it is. I don't think there's the demand yet, though, to go ahead and build another pharmacy. I think we're in the green. So to finish off this episode, we're going to go ahead and build our more advanced, I guess, GP's diagnosis room. So let's go ahead and carry this out. So whereabouts are we going to put this room? This room's going to be just beside the GP's office. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, for the first time, not make things symmetrical. I can go back and edit rooms anyway, though, so that doesn't bother me at all. Kind of wish the janitor wasn't where he was, but hey-ho. Okay, so for this room, you need to go ahead and put in an EZ scan, which I'm not really at all sure what the EZ stands for. I'm sure we'll find out. And also an, an, an examination table. Don't say that too fast, or you would have done what I just did there. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's go ahead and put an examination table in this corner here. We're going to go ahead and we'll take that around. And then we're going to go ahead and also put in a EZ scan. That's going to go in the corner over here, maybe, by the window. So that's perfect, and that allows for that room to start functioning. Though, again, we'll go ahead and add a few extra things into it as well. I don't think we need anything else in here, really. We could add a bin, I guess. Um, but outside of that, I think we are good to go. Filing cabinet, I guess, might be useful as well. 
So we'll add some of them into here again, just increasing the prestige of the room. Uh, but that room is good to go, which is good. So we'll build that. And then well done, the hospital level has increased. So as we can see in the bottom right hand corner, we're up to level three now, which is good. Keep expanding to attract more patients and staff. Perfect. Okay, so we've also unlocked a ward and there's a news flash. Lots going on at once here. And in general, I feel that this game really is that sort of thing. Transport fever, for example, can be very lots happening at once and then nothing. Whereas I feel this game is non-stop, which is it can maybe be a bit difficult for the person recording or the person playing or the viewer, but it's non-stop action. There's never going to be any time where I'm not doing nothing, you know? Whereas Transport Fever, especially at the start, it's very, very slow and tedious. Whereas this game, this is the first episode and we're already extremely busy. So newsflash, there's a new illness in time. We'll just go with that. I'm dyslexic, by the way, so please do not uh, judge. Um, there's a new illness in town, lightheadedness. We're going to need some expensive new equipment to deal with this. Sure. Continue expanding the hospital to unlock the treatment room. We may also need another GP's office on top of this and some more staff for this. Okay, perfect. So, again, we just go ahead and increase hospital level by expanding the hospital with more rooms and staff. Again, this will just land up being adding in more GP's offices. Again, it depends on the demand and sort of stuff, but we're going to increase the demand. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to hire two doctors or another doctor, another nurse and build another GP's office. So first of all, I believe I don't need anyone to man this. I do. I require a nurse in here. So let's go ahead and first of all, sort that out. Nurses menu. Wow. Um, we have got someone at 37,000. Based on my money right now, I feel that's too much though. That's a long term aim. Ernest, what traits have you got? So you've got increased pharmacy skills of 20%, which could be quite useful, especially when our pharmacist takes a break. And then we've also got increased happiness 10%. Clarabelle, you've got plus 10% happiness, but you have better treatment skills. Now, for a nurse, what is better? What is better? Doctor's all about the diagnosis. Nurse is about, so far it has been the pharmacy side of things. But would it be better, better to have the treatments? I'm going to go with the treatment here. You know that. I'm not at all sure if that is the best idea, but we'll place you into here. And that means this room is now into action, which is good to see. Again, we're also missing the receptionist. I'm guessing the receptionist is... Where is the receptionist? You're not in the toilet. Not in the staff room. Where are you? This is odd. Very odd. Are you getting a drink? Is that you? Yes. Right, okay, so you're returning to the reception now, which is good. But this is there's a bit of a queue right now, as we can see here. So we click on this, queue line 3. So this is again where it will be improved upon as time goes on. But so far, ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely happy. I am, I mean, it's been a very basic start right now, don't get me wrong, but as things go, I'm, I'm quite happy learning the game. I mean, it's not an overly difficult game at this stage. I wouldn't say it's gonna, it doesn't seem like an incredibly difficult game. It's well explained, let's put it this way. Games like Transport Fever, they're easy to play but hard to master. Not at all sure if this game will be the same, to be honest, but very much we're still in the tutorial stage, so Again, I don't know too much about late game. I have seen a few videos and I'm watching one or two let's plays just to get the feel of things anyway. But we'll see how we we'll continue on in the next few episodes. I'm quite happy with the progress we've made so far though. So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this episode up here. Hope you have enjoyed it. Please leave a like rating for a new series. Over the next, I guess, about 10 days or so, we are doing daily uploads, which you'll be happy about. Please follow me on Twitter if you have Twitter or if you don't have Twitter make a Twitter But go ahead and follow me on Twitter just because you can go ahead and have one-to-one -one conversations with me all the time I do it with many people in the comments section over on Twitter and I'm more likely to reply quicker on Twitter than YouTube It also just allows for really good integration and feedback and very much That's what I've been talking about and I've also been talking a lot about two-point hospital over there so 
come and give us a chat over there. Then on top of that as well, go ahead and follow me on Patreon as well. I'm starting to do a lot more with my Patreon. We're also about to create a Discord as well, so look out for that. Daily uploads, as I said, for the next 10 days. Currently, we've got like four series going on simultaneously, and I don't have a lot of time right now just with me relocating 500 miles away. So the next episode of this will be in three days, though after episode four, it will go down to every two days, I believe. So... Next episode's in three days, look out for that. Right now we've also got Semi Airports and we've got Transport Fever on the channel. The Transport Fever is about to go on a small break once it gets to episode 40. But it will come back like at the start of October, so it's fine, don't worry about it. Again, follow me on Twitter for all of this information. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you have enjoyed. Again, if you've not left a like rating, please do. Go ahead and leave me a comment, give me some feedback, and that's all. So thank you very much for watching, my name is Bigfoot, and I'm out.